안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. Bonjour. Hi everyone. I, Gwyneth Rosenthal, and together with Ms. Rosenthalus and Ms. Charisa Tendoy, are your presenter for today's topic. Our lesson for today is about the description of the characteristics of algebra during the Renaissance period and early development of symbolic algebra. Good day everyone, I am Rose Antilos. For today's video, we will be tackling the descriptions of the characteristics of algebra during the Renaissance period. And for you to avoid some confusions, take note that the video for this topic is divided into four parts. So, we will get some overview of the Renaissance. The Renaissance, it was a 14th century artistic movement reaching its peak in the 16th century. The Renaissance happened for different people in different countries. It depends on what country you look at. The Renaissance does mean rebirth. This idea came from religion. So, they started off beforehand. Before, the Renaissance really focusing on religious aspects. It was very religious based, but then the Renaissance happened and they realized that humans could do a lot and so they formed this concept called humanism. Humanism is a philosophy that put humans at the center of everything, focusing on human achievements and interests. So, in Renaissance mathematics, with all of these ideas and inventions, and technology going back and forth between countries, there's a lot more need for trade, and more math needed to figure out more complex trading problems. So, most of the advancement in math we have seen are were needed for merchant trading. There are practical texts, detailed problems in the context needed for young merchants. And there were some in geometry and astronomy, like the calendar and elementary number theory. The Italian Abbasist The Italian Abbasist is a class of mathematicians who wrote texts that they thought the math needed for the sons of merchants. Italy was the start and the rub of this. They actually studied Arabic math thoroughly, so a lot of math was based in algebra so this is actually a counting board in the picture you can see the roman numerals were used with the counting sliding pieces there and those were used to keep account ledgers so in mathematical text the mathematical text were mostly practical it includes recreational problems in addition to business problems no problems without solution. In higher degree equations, another innovation of the Abbasis was their extension of Islamic quadratic solving techniques to higher order equations. Each text began with the standard six type of quadratic as described by al khwarizmi Unlike Islamic math, However, which was rhetorical, they were allowed to use symbol for a nonce. And so we have these Italian words here, and then they presented different things, so they came up with some words to mean certain things like cosa means things, senso means square, cubo means cube, radis means root, pio means plus, and mino means minus. And so they were used in the problems, and we'll see that here next in the example. Find two numbers such that multiplying one by the other makes 8, and the sum of their squares is 27. This problem came from Antonio Di Mazzini. Suppose the first number is un cosa meno la radis di alcuna quantita, which means a thing minus the root of some quantity and the second number is una cosa più la radis di alcuna quantita which means a thing plus the root of some quantity they just solved that system of equation algebraically and they would get the x equals square root of 43 over 2 
and y is equals 11 over 4. And so looking at the specific mathematicians in France, we have Nicolas Jouquet. He was a French mathematician who supported the works of Fibonacci and he was a follower of him. He is the most famous through writing a three-part treatise called Triparte in the Science des Nombres, containing algebra and arithmetic problems. And in three parts, hence the word triparte, which triparte is not a French or Italian word, but it comes from parte, which is Italian, and then tri, which is three. And so it's like three parts, but it's more commonly known as just triparte. So in triparte part one, he focuses on the Hindu arabic place value system, zero positive and negative numbers, and rules with fractions. And so he really focuses on that, and something he ended up proving. If the fraction A over B is less than C over D, where A, B, C, and D are positive numbers, then if you add the numerators and the denominators together, that number is going to be greater than A over B, but less than C over D. And so, we are going to see that proof. So, if we suppose that A over B is less than C over D, then we can multiply both sides and cancel out the B and the D. Do the same thing both sides. So, we have AD is less than BC, and then we get two trains of thought. Here to come up with our answer, following on the left on both sides, we can add a plus b just because we can add whatever or multiply whatever on as long as we do it on both sides. If we add a b to both sides, we can factor out an a on the left and b a on the right and then divide. Then we end up with a over b less than a plus c over b plus t and similarly on the right hand side we just add dc to both sides we can factor out ad and on the left and then c on the right and then divide and we have a plus c over b plus t less than c plus c over d and then those two together is compound inequality where a over b is less than a plus c over b plus t which is less than c over d in part two triparty part two he presented on rules of numbers including compound roots and index radicals compound root is like what you see in the example down here where there's a root inside of a root already and then an index radical just a radical that's not a square root it would be a cube root he used the fraction rule to extract square roots. He introduces notation. So we had those Italian words before, but this time he just writes like a symbol for it, which is getting closer to how we write symbols in our mathematical notation. And so that P over the line with it is plus, then M with the line over it is minus. And then R squared is a square root, and R cubed is a cube root. Jimmy say something like this in his work with the example here. R squared 14 the P with the line over it and the R squared 180 is actually written in our notations as square root of 14 plus square root of 180. And triparty part 3, he really focused on algebra. He introduces exponential notation. So, for example, 1 to the 3rd equals x to the 3rd, and 2 fifth equals 2x to the 5th. And so, he wasn't like evaluating this exponential, but he was simply just meaning those mean, like linear equations, since he was doing algebra, and so that you can see the numbers was the coefficient to the x, 
and then the exponent is actually what applied to the x and not the number.